So my discussion is about who invented pasteurization. Ready? I'm ready. Go. So who invented pasteurization? I was uh, doing some research on werewolves, as like many of you, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> And I came across this interesting article. I was looking about the efficacy of silver in medicine, and I found this article about uh, this process of pasteurization. It went back to 1822, described the same thing. So here's Louis Pasteur, uh, and his work was done mostly in the 1860s, and he is really famous for inventing pasteurizations, which we mostly know about uh, from milk. Um, so I decided to look up Louis Pasteur and try to figure out why would something from the 1860s have already existed in the 1820s. So reading about this, I don't know if you can see that, but there's a little S-shaped flask down there. A lot of his experiments were done with broth uh, and trying to find out whether or not broth uh, was going to become infected. So what he did was he would put b uh, broth into a S-shaped curve, boil it, and then what, this S-shaped curve kept out uh, infections. And so... Uh, it would stay clean of, of living things until you broke it and exposed to the air, and then the infections would come back. So today we use pasteurization to keep our milk fresh. Uh, there's really two kinds of pasteurization. There's high temperature, short time, and then there's long, I forget the name of the long term, but basically the short term lasts for weeks, uh, and the long term lasts for months. As, uh, Ignat Samelweis uh, had also done some research on this type of material, uh, and Oliver Wendell Holmes, they're both famous. Uh, Samelweis was famous for making people wash their hands. It reduced infections, but people stopped believing him, and he went mad. Uh, <laughs> in 1858, a can opener was invented. Now, you may know canning uses a high temperature uh, pasteurization process. They didn't call it pasteurization in 1858 because it wasn't invented yet. But, uh, you know, 1858, Oh, but you know, the can was invented in 1810, which is kind of weird if you think about it. So from 1810 to 1858, people opened cans with screwdrivers and hammers. So, uh, you know, uh, anyway, but Philip de Girard, de Girard uh, invented uh, the canning process, which is really popular, but he had copied it from Nicolas Appert, who had actually invented canning in 1809, although it was actually in bottles. He invented uh, this process of heating up the bottled food, which was used by Napoleon to store food for long, terms, uh, long periods of time. So... Uh, and then he had actually copied his work uh, off of <laughs> uh, the in investigations of Spallanzani. And I put in Bizarro because Dragon Con. Uh, <laughs> but Sp Spallanzani had been working on trying to figure out if uh, biogenesis was real or not. And so he had done this experiment with broth, the same experiment. He discovered that if you heated the broth and cooled it and kept it with the S-shaped curve, that it would not become infected. The same experiment that uh, Pasteur had done. But if you broke the stem, it becomes infected. But he was copying the inventions of, or the, uh, the experiments of John Needham. And John Needham had done the same experiment and determined that, yes, life just sprouts from nothing because he had boiled the liquid and then put a lid on it and then broth uh, grew a mold. But what had happened was he'd actually left it open. Anyway, pasteurization is an incremental process, or the whole process of invention is incremental. Progr progress is incremental and accretive. If you look at the timeline, all of these people contributed to what we call pasteurization because every invention is this way. There's a guy named John Gall who had this law. He says, a complex system that works is invariably found to evolve from a simple system that worked. He goes on to explain how complex systems that don't work have to be redeveloped from simple systems that do work. This is kind of like the way we, we do things in every invention process. My takeaway from this is any complex system that works always evolves from simple systems. That includes inventions, machines and human beings. It's a principle that's actually fundamental to evolution and to the inventive process. So if we look at any complex system, like this is a steam engine. If you found a steam engine, you would assume it was invented. But what may not be obvious is that before this complicated machine was invented, there had to be a series of simpler inventions. So here's just the heat engine, which preceded the steam engine. And even before the heat engine, we had things like Hero's engine all, all the way back in Roman times. So all of these things, it's the slow accretion of information over time, which we call technology. But sometimes it gets associated with weird ideas, such as <laughs> where, <laughs> where do we get microchips? If you don't know anything about microchips, you might be believe that aliens gave them to us or that we had to reverse engineer them from a spaceship. But reality is that microchips are a... They're an accretive uh, invention. They came from t uh, a lot of work over time. When you encounter technology you don't understand, postulate simple underlying mechanisms and incremental improvements over time, not aliens, wizards, or gods. Hmm. <laughs> I'm Blake Smith. You can follow me on Twitter at Dr. Atlantis and uh, listen to lunchtalk.org if you care to. All right, thank you. <laughs>
Yeah. <laughs>